and still ahead of the Edo state elections. Governor Godwin Obasaki has expressed serious concerns over the continuous harassment and arrest of People's Democratic Party chieftains in Edo state ahead of the upcoming gubernatorial election of September 21st. Obasaki cautioned that the police unchecked actions could potentially lead to a statewide crisis which could have far-reaching and destabilizing effects on the country. Speaking to protesters at the government house in Benin City who gathered to voice their displeasure over the police's actions, Obasaki stated that a local government chairman was also arrested in connivance uh, with the opposition party in the state to intimidate members of the PDP. Obasaki revealed that that he has contacted the Inspector General of Police for urgent intervention. And joining us now to discuss this is Executive Director, Not Too Young to Lead Initiative, Elvis Akwobi. Well, Elvis, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, I have to ask your thought on the allegations by Governor Obasaki that the police are harassing, harassing members of the ruling party in, in uh, Edo State. Um, I got a wind of that too, but for me, it, um, if, if really we are practicing true democracy, I think the police should be, shouldn't be biased and um, it shouldn't be used as uh, political tools to which hunt other people because um, lately, if you agree with me, the kind of um, things, that, the in, information that are coming out, actions that are going on across board in Nigeria, they are not inspired. I only want to mention that uh, are we practicing true democracy? Because in a democratic settings, power belongs to the people and not a few persons. Let's not forget, so I don't mean to digress, that at the moment, um, I see battling with the um, Nigerian Labour Congress uh, president who seems to be arrested. I don't know if he's been released, but um, going back to the elections, the police have no right to arrest anybody that has not committed crime. It's, um, it's a political uh, period for the people of those states. Let them play the policy devoid of clashes and um, bias from the police force. I'm so glad you used the term bias because I have to ask, are there any recent amendments or reforms in Nigerian election laws that relate to the conduct of police officers and their interaction with political parties? I've not heard of any, but uh, I think what we should work towards is strengthen our police institution. Less, um, there should be... Um, reforms on how the Inspector General of Police is being selected because if we really want to tell ourselves to because oftentimes we talk about them, um, we just read the constitution and then um, we, we tell ourselves the truth. Whoever nominates you for an um, appointment, sometimes you tend to tilt towards what that person wants, the interest of that person, whether it's good or bad. It takes few persons to just say, okay, let me put Nigeria interest first before the interest of whoever nominated me for this position. And um, I think at the moment, um, Nigerians are going through a lot. Uh, I really want to see this opportunity to all the Edo State people that uh, this is time for them to determine who will make or my Edo State in the next four years. Mm. And uh, how might the allegations of police har harassment affect the, you know, the public perception of the electoral process and the legitimacy of the election results in Edo State? I'll speak from my own um, perspective. I think a handful of Nigerians have given up on Nigeria. We don't, we don't build trust with institutions, even the electoral umpire, I, I can categorize the state. For me as a person, I don't have not built trust with them. I don't know what they do, if they do, they, they build trust with them because oftentimes their actions and inactions are portrayed as what's on the, uh, the uh, electoral act does not reflect what they do. The police oftentimes are a, some of them, they are not biased, but a handful of them too, see towards um, monetary politics and all that. That's why you see issues of uh, intimidating opposition or maybe party members from different but the thing is, the Edo State people need to know that incompetence dressed up as strategy is still incompetent and still totally unacceptable. They should check the track record. At the moment, we have three, three uh, front um, liners, the PDP, the APC, and the Labour Party. The Edo people should go and check the track record of um, these persons. And it's not about, I will do this thing. What have you done? before you will do this thing. Like, you know, oftentimes during electionary, you see people come out to promise I will 
build this for you, I will build this for you, I will build this for you, and we've seen the brightest of all bearers go to bed as soon as, as, soon as they clinch on, onto power. They should check the track record of those people aspiring for it. For me, I, I don't, I won't say I've studied a particular candidate very, very well. He has, um, his track record shows that he has, you know, he came in from the private sector and he has grown from something from nothing to something. So anybody that grows something from nothing to something can transform a those things. Well, Elvis, I must say thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you for doing this with us uh, this uh, this afternoon. Uh, Elvis will be there. He's the executive director, Not Too Young to Lead initiative. Once again, many thanks. Thanks for having me.